My name is Dr. Claire Tonry and I am a Senior Postdoctor Research Fellow at the Wellcome Wilson Institute for Experimental Research. So my research background is in heart disease, uh, specifically heart failure. Um, I use a, um, a technology called proteomics to look for biomarkers for um, heart failure, um, cardiac arrhythmia and other cardiovascular conditions. So just leading up to um, the COVID-19 pandemic, my work was proteomic type screen to identify some novel biomarkers for cardiac arrhythmia and atrial fibrillation. Uh, so since the COVID-19 pandemic, I've been applying the same skills and technologies to uh, look for biomarkers in COVID-19 patients. So we have collected over 3,000 blood and saliva samples from children who were likely to be at risk of COVID-19 infection and we're using those samples to measure antibodies for their coronavirus SARS-CoV-2, um, look for signs of inflammation and identify biomarkers for disease severity. So just to expand some more on what biomarkers are then, they're um, a biological molecule or anything that can be measured in your fluids or your um, in a clinical sample. Basically it indicates presence of disease, um, it can indicate severity of disease and it can indicate uh, response to treatment. So some of the common biomarkers that we know of are the likes of BNP which is uh, measured to, to detect levels of cardiovascular dysfunction. Um, or PSA, which is a common biomarker for prostate cancer. So we are developing sort of panels of biomarkers, which give a more holistic picture of the, how a disease is progressing in the body. And we're hoping that we'll be able to find um, a collection of biomarkers in the in serum or saliva samples that we've collected that would indicate if a child or a person who has COVID-19 infection is likely to have severe disease or milder form of disease. I'm Cahal Rory and I'm a PhD candidate in the Watson Group. So I was a medical student at, here at Queen's and whenever the COVID-19 lockdown hit, I initially started working in A&E, and um, helping out with, you know, obviously the increased level of patients coming in. And then I saw, had the opportunity to delve into the research side um, with COVID whenever Dr. Tom Waterfield and Dr. Chris Watson um, offered a PhD course. So I've always had an interest in research. Um, obviously uh, everything that clinicians do is guided by evidence-based medicine and I've always wanted to do something that's involved academic work and trying to couple that with providing better care for patients. So whenever the opportunity came up to move from um, working as, or studying as a medical student to studying in a more lab-based environment, um, I leapt at it really um, and Dr. Tonry and Dr. Watson have been very supportive of me. Obviously there's um, quite a few differences between working in a hospital and um, working in the lab but overall I've massively enjoyed it um, and it's proven challenging but uh, well worthwhile. So this is actually um, a UK-wide study. So we've collected samples from five different sites across the UK and Northern Ireland. So we have quite a large cohort of um, children enrolled in this study. And we've collected samples at the very start, um, April 2020, peak lockdown. We collected samples eight weeks after that. And then we collected samples at a third visit um, in October, just gone past. So we haven't yet analyzed samples from October, but one of the main objectives of the study was to look at the prevalence of COVID-19 in children in general, as that is one of the disputed kind of facts of how, uh, of, um, how transmissible the disease is between children and if they are at risk of being infected, more or less risk than adults, um, for example. So we have data collected on the antibody levels of COVID um, for coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 in children at these across these time points. Um, with these samples as well, obviously we can retrospectively go back and look for signs of potentially, for example, the new strain that only emerged before Christmas. It might have been there earlier. Um, and we have these, like, as longitudinal samples as well, we'll be able to monitor changes in other biomarkers or signs of inflammation to see how they've changed over time and how they correlate with antibody levels and other symptoms of infection that the children may have displayed.